Hello everyone, Zero Fossil Fuel here. Just wanted to give you a brief update of the uh, no good that I've been up to today. I uh, took the opportunity today to dismantle the cell, take apart my ship in a bottle, and redo the electrolyzer plate cavity. I'll give you a quick look at that. You can see what I have done is I have taken and rearranged the uh, let's see, eight, nine outer plates and squeeze them into half the space. The distance between the plates is now one eighth of an inch instead of one quarter. These uh, sheets of metal that you see in the in the grooves of the outer edges here, these are simply acting as placeholders while the glue sets tonight. Uh, we'll still use the same arrangement, two positives on the outside, a negative in the middle. And if you will notice also, this time I have gone ahead and cut out the bottom. It's no longer a right, perforated, uh, perforated metal or perforated holes. It's just uh, straight open through the bottom, and that of course made the frame a little bit more fragile because not only is it is it narrower this way, but I've also have more grooves sliced in it this way. So it was fairly flimsy. The glue should hold it all together nicely as uh, one one solid unit. So that'll dry overnight. I've also begun work on a little bit more accurate way of measuring the gas production. Here I have a one liter, uh, I guess this was a one liter bottle of brisk iced tea. And inside you'll see I have a, a stiff straw inserted through the cap, through a hole that's drilled, and down in the bottom there's a, a flexible gasket you see that blue gasket down inside. So it's not just the plastic cap against the neck of the bottle. It has a little bit built-in gasket here that's uh, a little bit more flexible than the plastic and it creates a very nice seal against the edge of the straw. I've also sealed it up with the polyurethane glue and you'll also notice in the cap a T fitting. I went exploring in my shed the other day and I uh, was looking for some ideas and some parts to scrounge around for and what did I find but an old fish tank that had goldfish in it and uh, a whole bunch of hose, some nifty little valves, another example, another example of the valve of a valve right there. So if you're looking for some cheap, dirty, Cheap and, cheap and dirty uh, plumbing? Visit your local pet store. Take a look at the aquarium section. Very, very good value there. So I'm going to let that dry. And in the footsteps of someone else here not too long ago... Oh, I just wanted to show you also how, how this is going to work before I, before I go any further. Uh, what we'll do is we'll take... Let me back up here. Yeah. We're going to fill this up with water to about here. The whole assembly is going to sit in this coffee can. It centers itself very nicely. So uh, if I just take this bottle and set it in there, it stands upright. Holds itself approximately mm, two inches off the bottom of the, of the can. I'll have a hole drilled in both sides with a pipe coming and a pipe going. One pipe will go to the electrolyzer tank. The other one will have a valve on it and I will simply suck on it with my mouth to remove the water from the 500 milliliter bottle which simply floats on top of the straw. So as the gas produces the bottle will rise. I could even probably uh, mark it off on the edge to show uh, the amount in, in terms of uh, fractions of 500 milliliters till it rises to the top. The only back pressure that this is going to create is the weight of the bottle and of course that is extremely light. So that should work out very nicely. And the last thing I want to show you is I followed in the footsteps of someone else here on YouTube who has also joined us at the overunity.com forum. And I made myself a little HHO torch. Now, he used a, uh, a needle for filling, like, say, a basketball. I used, uh, let's see how well you can see this. There we go. This was salvaged from a hypodermic needle that uh, is not really a medical needle, but it's a, it's a little bit larger than a medical needle and it has a blunt tip instead of a sharp tip. Uh, it has a smaller inside diameter than the filler for a basketball. 
and I ran it through this bubbler. Okay, so you can see how the bubbler operates. I'm just sucking on the tube here, on the tip. And of course, this tube was attached to the electrolyzer tank. I had a question for this gentleman. How do you keep the flame from on, on a even even on a small tip like this from backfeeding down the tube into your into your uh, bubbler? And he said, "Well, I put some uh, bronze steel wool or some bronze wool in the tip, and I had the uh, the bubbler as well. So I tried it. I lit it. It worked fine. But then I wanted to put it out." And what I did to put to try and put it out was to simply take the tip off and remove it from the end of the tube. The instant I did that, it backfired, went straight into the into the bubbler, and fortunately, there's only a tiny bit of gas that that forms at the top of the bubbler, and it made a very loud pop, push the push the uh, the uh, outlet tube right out of the cap. And needless to say, I was very glad that I had a bubbler because otherwise, I would have had a fairly large explosion and my electrolyzer tank and pieces all over the floor. Be extremely, extremely careful when you are dealing with a pre-mixed combustible gas. I guess I can't stress that enough. So if you're going to do anything with the gas that you create, be sure to run it through a bubbler first. Never ever do anything in terms of combusting the gas without some form of mechanism to prevent it from backfiring all the way into the generation source and literally perhaps causing you injury um, could have very easily so anyway that's where we're at I'm gonna let these uh, these pieces dry overnight and tomorrow we'll uh, submerge these back in the tank uh, the first thing I want to do of course is run a test to gauge the difference in the production efficiency with the um, closer spaced plates. Now I do want to point out, if you remember in the in the earlier videos, I numbered all my plates and I know exactly which order they go in here. And the same plates that came out are the same plates that have gone in. They haven't been touched by human hands. They are you know, oriented exactly the same way and they will go into exactly the same electrolyte. So that the only variable here is the fact that I have closed the spacing on the plates and we'll see what, what the difference is. Uh, hopefully I have some very exciting news to report when I do that. That's it for now. Zero Fossil Fuel signing out. Everyone have a good evening.